Hello and welcome. A bit of a heavier video today and just for you guys I'm going to leave you the phone number to Samaritans down below because we are going to be talking about grief. If you're going through that I feel for you it is a horrid thing to feel and I really do hope you get through it and I hope you get through it well and you are. You get to a place where you're happy with yourself. I know that sounds a bit cliche but I really do. I know how it feels like I lost my dad eight years ago and that's about as personal as this video is going to get. And so, like I said, I'm leaving the number for Samaritans down below as what this video contains is about grief and I hope you guys are well and happy with yourselves. Anyway, let's continue with the video and we're talking about the Black Templars. Now, the Black Templars are an interesting chapter, a successor to the Imperial Fists. They are very religious. They don't really think of the Codex Astartes as anything good. I mean, you see the meme. Oh, well, how good is a book as a weapon? And the Black Templar replies, are you hitting them hard enough? And so, let's talk about it. Now, the Imperial Fists have a gene flaw. Actually, they technically have two. One of the few chapters that actually has two flaws within their gene seed. Now, the first one means they cannot produce the acid in their saliva, so they can't spit acid. The other one is the black. Now, the black, to me, is one that should be explored a lot more because it's a very interesting subject. I know that sounds a bit disrespectful, but it is interesting to look at and see how Space Marine deals with these sort of emotions, as we rarely see any Space Marine have any emotions outside of the Space Wolves, really. And I know we can talk about chaos and slanesh and desires and how Death Guard tend to be a bit more happier than your average Space Marine, but on the whole, most Space Marines are very melancholic, very, very somber characters, tend to be very neutral in their emotions as would be fitting a genetically engineered superhuman warrior. They are of course designed only to do one thing, and that is to rage war and nothing else. So when it comes to a space marine gene flaw affecting their emotions so severely as to make them catatonic, I think that's something that you know Games Workshop and the Black Library should really explore. But when you talk about grief, you talk about the five different stages. Now the stages are, you have Denial. Denial is very self-explanatory. You do not accept what has happened. You don't agree with what's happened, and you don't ever actually bring it up. You know, bring it up out yourself to acknowledge, even acknowledge what has happened. So, if you've lost someone that you love, you kind of just don't accept them because it's such a huge, you know, hit to your system. The second is anger. Again, very self-explanatory, but this can be manifested in one of two ways. Simple. Sim that is very simplified. Okay. I, well, I'm not going to deny that. That is very, very simplified. It is either very implosive or very explosive. Implosive anger makes people somber, but they also make them methodical. They plan their revenge. They plan their vengeance. They plan everything to, so they can take it out on the right person. Or they can be very self-destructive. They can do things that would harm them. You know, you get people who sleep around knowing that there's high risks of STDs, pregnancy, stuff like that. Or they take high risks. They do dangerous things such as they start taking on dangerous hobbies, you know, such as rock climbing, base jumping, parachuting. They know it's dangerous and they know there's a high risk involved that they might not make it. And then you have bargaining, again, very self-explanatory. You try to make any form of deal or you know anything to stop the feelings that you're feeling or even bring back what you have lost. Now, bargaining can also be very much connected to the denial with that part, you know, you want to bring back and bring put it all back to being normal again. Then you have the depression side, which of course is what affects most Imperial Fists when they, or the Imperial Fists successors, when they f go down with the black or get afflicted with the black, you know, they become catatonic, they get depressed. This is when, if you see someone in like through really severe depression, you'll see when they cry, it's not just one or two tears, it's like just an absolute floodgates of tears. And it's again, it's very nasty. Depression is one of the worst things. Again, this can be linked to anger as well because you become you can end up becoming again very self destructive. But unfortunately, with depression, it can become a more physical self destruction, as in self harm. Um, sorry, this is a deep video, but this sort of stuff needs to be talked about to get into context with the Black Templars. I am very, very sorry for this. And finally, is acceptance, and acceptance is basically what it is you accept what's happened you move on moving on doesn't mean forgetting or acknowledging what's happened it just means you move on with your life and you try to get to a back to normalcy as you can possibly get with the loss <sighs> well that was very deep i do apologize again 
but like I said, it is something that needs context for the rest of this video. Now, the Black Templars are, a bit, like I said, an interesting chapter. They don't eschew es 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 to the Codex Astartes. They tend to have a lot more than a thousand different space marines in their chapter. And yeah, and they also are very much given as being very, very angry space marines. Because that's the way they are. But also what is interesting to note is where their anger is aimed. Their anger, though they do fight Xenos a lot, their anger tends to be very, very targeted at chaos. Chaos, traitors, heretics, apostates, anything that is actively against the Emperor and pro-chaos, or even just against the Emperor within the Imperial Man, they are very much that way inclined. And I think that would be, that's very interesting to see for a space mean to be so very laser focused at a specific faction or type of enemy. I mean, every other sort of faction, except the Sisters of Battle, again, tend to go for the Heretic and the Traitor, but almost every other Imperial faction does, of course, go for, against anyone who's a threat to the Imperium as a whole and not be so laser focused. They're also a very holy and religious sect, of course, the Black Emperors are, of course, and again, this could be part of the you know, denial of it, that they still kind of think the Emperor is still alive, even in a form of a god. So that's kind of two stages of deny uh, grief that we're talking about here. You know, that they kind of still think the Emperor may be alive, but not actually dead, and also the fact that they are constantly angry. But they do tend to manifest the anger in both implosive and explosive ways. Now, if we talk about the implosive ways, which is interesting to see, when it's, you know, it's about her, um, mostly self-destruction and, you know, doing, taking high risks. We see this a lot. And if we go to the book of Hell's Reach, it is very interesting to see because we know, if you look at it, if you read the book, you see that a lot of the Black Templars do actually go out in the field and take on the big things. Look at the final battle in Hell's Reach. They are heavily, heavily outnumbered and Grimaldus takes a massive risk by firing that titanic weapon and the risks he takes are quite a lot first is a basically a one-shot weapon to take out the massive orc titan and finally he doesn't do the rituals or you know anything to appease the means machine spirit to help the weapon so he basically raises his own risks higher of failure than success through you know he might not be doing it consciously like saying yeah if i do this i'm going to you know deliberately risk myself and everyone here but it's almost a subconscious thing to, just to get it done and get it over with. And we ever see other forms of this as well. Again, in Howl's Reach, it's a fantastic book, well worth reading, by the way, is when Grimaldus becomes High Chaplain. When he becomes High Chaplain, Halbrecht hits him and says, that's the last blow you're ever going to take, but you're not allowed to return, which is a high risk for Halbrecht. Not only for Grimaldus to accept the blow, which is obviously, a, you know, he's testing himself and his own metal, for, to not react in anger, but also for Halbrecht to hit a space marine in such close combat and not expect them to hit him back because he doesn't know. Again, a space marine is very strong, even if it's someone as mighty as Halbrecht, who's a very strong, you know, he's a very strong character. He leads the Black Templars, but he also is running the risk of that space marine just laying into him and killing him for the disrespect. Again, it's very high risk. And there's also their crusade squads where they take near fights along with them you know to train them and mentor them into battle and while this tends to work out it does mean there's a lot of risks again for the black templars the reason you don't see this in any other chapter is because of the amount of risks it includes first you are training someone in the middle of a battlefield someone who's very new yes they are a space wing still but you have to protect them as well as yourself so you're basically having to think for two people not just yourself and finally that near fight is not very well armored and is very likely to die so it could probably cause more issues with your own mental state with that as well so that's the more implosive things we see and we also see that with implosion and self-destruction we see that these people tend to be very somber and melancholic people and this is a trait throughout the black Templars. they don't tend to be happy or even in a neutral state they tend to be always on this um, very negative side of things are very downward and uh, the first again i'm just going to relate back to hell's reach here because it's a very good book to show how the black templars may be weaponizing the, the black 
And that is with his very first line in the book, and that is, I'm going to die on this planet. He knows the risks involved, and he just doesn't care. It's like, I'm going to die on this planet. I accept this. I accept that fact. He doesn't care that he's going to die on the planet, but it just, again, shows more of this self-inward self, um, anger. You know, very, very much. This is explosive anger right here, because he's accepted it, and he's going to be taking these high risks to do it. Then you have their battles and the way they fight. The way they fight is very unlike any chapter on the whole. When I say that, most chapters have the ten different companies. They have, you know, bolter squads, assault squads, ex you know, tank squads. Well, Black Panthers do have all these things. They tend to maintain suicidal charges and go in straight first into close combat. That is their doctrination. Their, their doctrine, I should say. And again, this shows a level of high risk and self-destruction, but it also shows that they are also now showing off their explosive anger by just letting it all out, getting very angry. And if you read these in all of the books, the codexes or codices, and you see it very commonly, and that's how they are. They are very angry in close combat. They are literally ravening beasts. Most akin, like, of the most common one I see, and I don't think it's that far, far off, is to a thinking world eater. They're a world eater who's actually still conscious of their thoughts. They're not just as Raven Berserker, but they've got that level of anger being released on them. And as I said before, we also see this very laser-focused enemy. They, like, they do fight Xenos. They fight them a lot. But they will divert from a Xenos invasion if they know they're going to fight Chaos instead. The Warriors of Armageddon didn't do this. They did actually end up following Gasgol Fracker. Again, this shows the absolute level of anger. When Gasgol retreated, the Black Templars followed. Not just to rout them, as would be common, but to keep going after them. Again, we see this absolutely high level of anger there. And I still think this is connected to their gene flaw. Because almost every other space marine, once Gasgol left the sector, yes, he would still be a risk and a threat to the Imperium, but they would say, right, he's left the sector, the sector's safe now, we've secured it, and we've saved the people, we can you know, move on to the next one. And basically just say, Gasgol escaped, and move on. Where with the Black Templars, that wasn't even an option with them. They had to absolutely destroy him. Ironically, it was the Space Wolves that ended up fighting him again, which I thought was kind of weird. They should have done the Black Templars or Imperial Guard for that one. But it was Ragnar Blackmane decapitating him. But he picked up his own head, apparently. That's interesting. And, like I said, this shows uh, this idea that they're not just going to rout the enemy. It's utter destruction. Again, something we rarely see within Space Marines because of the lack of numbers that Space Marine chapter has. as so only a thousand. But also the risk that it implies to other systems and everything else. Because a war, if he was to land on another planet, Gasgol, and he started another war, they would probably see the same sort of destruction they saw in Armageddon. Most Space Moon chapters go out of a way to avoid that because it does harm more Imperial citizens, which is who they're meant to protect. Anyway, like I said, thank you very much for watching this video. A bit deeper than the last one. I do apologise. And I hope you guys are well. I really do. I hope you're doing well and think, you know, are in a good place in your own mind. And if you are feeling things, I've left a number for some outings down below for you guys. And I hope you are well. And it's in, going to be in the description and the first comment as well. I will hope you all have a good day and speak to you all again soon. Um, yeah, I am going to do my advertising this one. Uh, there is links to Wayne and Games down below if you wish to save 20% on your Warhammer or free delivery and free delivery after £20. There is for Wayne and Planet, you know, comics, DVDs, manga, all that stuff. Uh, my merchandise as well, my comic. And I'll see you all in the next one. I hope you guys are well. Have a great one.